Say, what is this? A gag? No, it's no gag. It's as serious as death. It doesn't matter what this civilian does with his time. If he wants to toss a ping pong ball down a bowling alley, it's his business. But in your business, brother, it matters. You just don't use a 45 caliber pistol cartridge like this if you've got a tough job for a walloper like the 105 millimeter howitzer shell. Don't get the wrong idea. They're both good. But they have different jobs to do. Between them lies the whole range of infantry ammunition and all the destruction and death it can produce. These are your tools from now on, soldier. Take a good look at them. 30 caliber carbine. 30 caliber rifle and machine gun. 50 caliber machine gun. Hand grenade. Rifle grenade, fragmentation. Anti-tank rifle grenade. Anti-tank rocket. 60 millimeter mortar, fragmentation. 81 millimeter mortar, fragmentation. 81 millimeter mortar, demolition. 37 millimeter armor piercing. 57 millimeter armor piercing. Let's look at them one by one and see what you've got on your side. The smallest weapon in the infantry regiment, a 45 caliber automatic pistol. It's a quick handling rapid fire weapon with a real wallop. Beyond 50 yards, it won't penetrate armor, even light armor like this steel helmet. But the heavy slug has terrific shot power. It'll knock a man down almost any time it hits him. You can use it in a tough spot at close range. But the real bite of the infantry is 30 caliber ammunition. This is the stuff you're going to have to live with. You'll use both types, 30 caliber rifle and 30 caliber carbine. Take a look at the carbine first. It has replaced many pistols in the infantry regiment. It's most effective at short ranges where you can fire 40 aimed shots a minute. At a range of 100 yards, this is what the carbine can do to a Nazi. He'd need more than aspirin for that head. Those monkeys aren't all behind trees. Take your time. A lot of these guys are going to be dead if you take your time. Squeeze them off, make it good. Pretty handy, that carbine. Even though it weighs only five pounds, it's a killer if you know just when to use it. Don't try to knock out a tank with it. But if a truck like this comes along, five pounds of carbine can be more effective than a five-ton roadblock. That's what a carbine with light 30 caliber ammunition can do up to 300 yards. But now take a gander at your heavier 30 caliber stuff. The stuff you riflemen have stashed away in your belts. That's really something. It comes in three kinds. Armor piercing, tracer, and ball. And soldier, it's going to be your best friend day in and day out. Whether you fire it with the M1, the O3, the M1917, the BAR, or a machine gun, the penetrating force is the same. Murderous. Remember what the carbine did to this German helmet? It went through easy enough, but the rifle slug just blasts through steel as if it were brown paper. Yeah, and it can do a lot more than plow through a helmet. For instance, that looks like pretty solid cover, doesn't it? An oak tree 12 inches thick. Now watch that bucket. Through the tree, through the bucket. That would make a pretty dead Nazi. Maybe you never realized what that 30 caliber of yours can do. Maybe you forgot. 
Well, take a look at this concrete wall. It's four inches thick. On the range, you find out that your rifle is the most accurate in the world. Now you'll see that it's got a punch to match. Anyone using that wall for cover would do it just once. At ranges up to 200 yards, armor-piercing ammunition can smash through this kind of wall any time, any day. Brother, that 30 caliber stuff is your right arm. 30 caliber ammunition doesn't look like much of a match for this brute, does it? Well, it isn't. But you can always use your head, too. That German 75 isn't worth a damn without a crew. Sure, the gun's still there, but so is your rifle. Plug the recoil mechanism. Or smack him in the eye, knock his sights out. That's a pretty sight, a blind German gun. You can put the clincher on it, knock it out for keeps with an incendiary grenade. Jam one of those incendiary grenades down the bore of the gun and the metal from the grenade will fuse with the tube. That chokes it up fine, for good. Plenty or nothing. The incendiary grenade was just what the doctor recommended for the German 75. But you've got another prescription for the boys themselves. The fragmentation grenade. It's very useful for treating them when they're bunched, like these guys. Flying fragments will give them a long rest cure. You've got different grenades for almost any situation. Suppose you're in a spot and want to advance behind a smoke screen. Well, reach into your bag for a white phosphorus hand grenade. It throws burning particles as far as 20 feet. It's not meant to be an offensive weapon, but a hot shower like this is nothing to get caught in. A few drops on his skin will make him wish he were dead. If enough fall on him, he will be. What if you find a Nazi pillbox staring you in the face and you want to take care of it without being seen? There's one more GI grenade. The Army calls it the frangible grenade with the FS filler. But if that sounds like double talk to you, just remember this. It produces a heavier smoke screen than the white phosphorus hand grenade. It hangs around a lot longer. It'll cover the movement of more men and help them get up there to smash that pillbox. Now for your automatic weapons. Lesson number one. These five men with M1s are getting off a total of 80 aimed shots a minute. This man coming up with the automatic rifle, the BAR to you, can also fire 80 shots a minute himself. That'll give you some idea of the destructive power of your automatic weapons. It means, of course, that one man with the BAR has a firepower equal to five men with the M1 and can pin the enemy down just as effectively. The five riflemen are now free to maneuver. They can come around and try to hit him on the flank. A powerful weapon in the hand.